before sunrise, July 13, 2008, northern Afghanistan. A small band of U.S. Army paratroopers take their positions around their vehicle patrol base, VPB Kaler, near the Afghan village of Wanat. These men of Chosen Company were less than two weeks from the end of their 14-month deployment. On a ridge near the main base was a small observation post, dubbed OP Topside, manned by nine paratroopers. As the early light began to peek over the mountains, the men at Kaler noticed suspicious activity in the high ground just west of the village. A machine gun burst rang out from a building to the north. At that, the entire valley erupted in fire from multiple directions. It was 4.20 a.m. The paratroopers immediately realized they were under a full-scale assault from more than 200 insurgents, who were now raining fire on 48 Americans. The massive first volley had devastated Topside, killing two and wounding the remainder. The bloodied survivors needed to rally fast or be overrun. Among the survivors at Topside was a 22-year-old sergeant, Ryan Pitts. His legs had been peppered by grenade shrapnel and his left arm wounded. Bleeding heavily, he only survived thanks to the quick action of his brother-in-arms, Corporal Jason Bogar, who applied a tourniquet to his leg. In my platoon, I was a forward observer, so I was tasked with controlling artillery, and if we had attack aviation come in, I would, I would interact with the attack aviation. We were kind of supposed to be just a little bit more eyes and ears out to, to see a little bit more what was going on. And the valley just erupted a fire. I was hitting both legs, my left arm, left hip, a little bit my forehead. Honestly, I was shell-shocked when it first happened because I was standing up um, trying to locate some a potential enemy location uh, and just everything blew up around me and I kind of I got tossed and I, I, mean, I came to and just was just very disoriented. For, for a couple of minutes. And, and we could tell with the amount of fire coming in that this is gonna, that, that no one can sit this out. I had never been in a fight before where anybody had to fight wounded. Generally all our guys, there was enough, we had enough control of the fight and enough guys on the ground that, you know, the wounded would even be able to stop and, and get treated. And this just really wasn't the case. Sergeant Pitts crawled to the north end of Topside and began tossing grenades at the enemy. His tactic of cooking off the grenades, letting the fuse burn for several seconds before throwing them, put himself at great danger, but prevented the insurgents from throwing the grenades back at the wounded soldiers before they detonated, which allowed Pitts to call in a situation report to his company commander. He forced himself to his knees and manned Topside's machine gun, firing directly into the enemy's position. Minutes later, Lieutenant John Brostrom and Corporal Jason Hovader braved direct fire to race from the main base to Topside to reinforce its desperate defense. They relieved the badly wounded Sergeant Pitts, who then continued to man the radio and call in fire support. Suddenly, all outgoing fire from within Topside went silent, and the enemy's guns and shouts were the only sounds Pitts could hear. The reinforcing soldiers had all been killed. It just sounded quiet. There wasn't a lot of gunfire coming out of the observation post, and so I crawled around. I didn't want to yell out in case the enemy, you know, I, if I was the only one there, and I crawled around and realized that, you know, everybody was, was gone. Everybody was, had been killed or had to, had to fall back. Um, and so it was at that time that I, I got on the radio and called down you know, to the main vehicle patrol base, and they could hear the enemy talking over the radio, um, you know, and told them that I needed, needed support. Because I was wounded, I couldn't leave. Um, you know, and it, they were close. I mean, I was trying to whisper to, to talk to them. My buddy Brian Hissong down there, a good friend of mine, we were as our second tour together. He, uh, you know, was, wasn't even any sort of response. Just immediately started shooting and laying down fire over the top of the sandbags. And then, um, you know, the guys down at the vehicle patrol base, hearing that I was alone up there and that I was wounded, and I couldn't leave, and hearing the the enemy. One of the guys, um, Specialist Jacob Sones, was like, "We got to get up there." And he linked up, he and Israel Garcia got together with Sar uh, Sean Samaru and Mike Denton at the same location where his song was. And they made a, a push up to the observation post. They actually engaged an enemy shooting into the observation post as they were, as they were coming up. And uh, those guys came up there and they, they saved my life. And it wasn't long after they were there though, that there was another barrage of rocket propelled grenades that came in and all, they were all wounded and Israel Garcia was mortally wounded. Also killed in the battle was 25-year-old Corporal Jason Bogar, whose quick actions at the outset had saved Pitts and allowed him to fight on. Minutes later, attack helicopters arrived to provide close air support, and at 6.15 a.m., 
After fighting for well over an hour while badly wounded, Sergeant Pitts was medically evacuated from the battlefield. His solitary stand bought U.S. forces precious time in reinforcing the post and calling in air support, actions that directly helped turn the tide of the battle. Everything I did, I was just trying to keep up with the guys around me. I mean, they were incredible. I'm the one that got the recognition because I received the award, but like, I know that it, this isn't mine. I just was trying to follow everybody else around me. You know, all these guys did incredible things. The only reason I'm here, the only reason I have a wife, the only reason I have kids, the only reason all these other guys have kids is because those guys gave everything they had that day. And I'm here because of them. I'm here because of those nine guys. The actions of Ryan Pitts were just one of many examples of American valor that day. The Army's report on the battle concluded that the individual exploits of bravery are too numerous to document. Yet on July 21st, 2014, he became only the 12th recipient of the Medal of Honor for valor in Afghanistan. Valor was everywhere that day, Ryan Pitts said upon receiving the medal. Among the 48 soldiers who stood against the overwhelming odds and the nine young Americans who lost their lives in the battle, he accepted the Medal of Honor for them, vowing to live a life worthy of their sacrifice. In honor of the sacrifice of the fallen heroes of the Battle of Wanan, may we all strive to live such a life.